Welcome to Inside New Albany Football with Coach Cody Stubblefield. I'm Jody Walls. I'm Brady Brock. We're with Gumtree Mortgage here in New Albany over on Starlin Avenue. We specialize in home financing needs, whether it's a purchase, a refinance, or a new construction. And we're super passionate about trying to help you find the home of your dreams, help you get it financed, just like this one right here. Go dogs. Go dogs. First play, we're gonna be fine. Welcome to episode three this season of season three of Inside New Albany High School Football with Mr. Paul Henry and Coach Cody Stubblefield. Our site sponsor for the show is Wally Morgan State Farm Insurance, where we're sitting. And also our show sponsor is Gumtree Mortgage, Brady Brock and... Jody Walls. Yep. We really appreciate the sponsors for joining us. If you need any insurance or looking for a home mortgage, please reach out to them. So Coach Itawamba, last week, tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, you know, got off to a slow start. Uh, they jumped up on us. Um, the big, biggest takeaway that we got, well, I mean, our guys kept fighting. We turned it on a little bit, made a couple of adjustments, and offensive line kind of started playing better, um, started moving the ball, a little bit, being a little more consistent, getting first down after first down. Um, our kids just battled, you know. Um, didn't end up on top, uh, but we got it back to where we scared them a little bit, got within uh, seven at one point, um, turned the ball over a time or two. You know, they turned the ball over, kept us in the game a little bit. Uh, ultimately just he fell short you know uh, had a really good team Clint Hoops does a tremendous job with those guys Michael Campbell uh, some of those other coaches on staff uh, you know they're really a solid team then you put number two on top of that you know Isaac Smith is a tremendous athlete it's gonna get a lot of rec recommend recognition throughout the year uh, you know we just uh, a little too much for us uh, Friday night but you know that being said really proud of the fight we had um, you know, consistently started moving the ball. Uh, defensively, we've got to make sure we tackle a little bit better, try to find a way to get a, a star like that on the ground. Um, special teams was, was another bright spot. Kicking game was really good again. Uh, two field goals on the night by Witt. Uh, Robbins and, and, and our other guy, Grayson Alexander, they were both 100% on extra points. Uh, so we had a ninth grader punting. Um, a lot, a lot of really young young players getting to, getting in on the action. Um, again, fell short, but proud of the effort that our guys showed. Yeah, I think what we pulled, 20, 28, 21, we pulled within seven there. We're moving At one the point it was even 30, 35, 28. Right, uh, and I think it was some big play. Maybe we, we, we had a big play get called back for a penalty or something. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you know, they, they turned the ball over. We, we went over the top um, with a play that Caleb Shaw, Braden put a really good pass on on the money. Shaw bobbled a little bit, but had a lot of concentration, came down with the ball. Um, then we went, we got into a gate formation, um, moved back to kick it. They jumped off side, so we elected to go for two. Um, when we got the two-point conversion, that kind of got us back within a, a one score. Um, you know, and then we traded scores again. Uh, just kind of kind of ran, ran out. We had a turnover. Uh, Would have got it back within seven again, but one of our young sophomores turned the ball over. Zion Robinson had had three really good runs in a row, uh, and then and then fumbled it. So um, again, we we needed to find a way to consistently stop Isaac Smith and their offense. We didn't do that. You know, as as hard as as the defense fought and tried, uh, we fell short there. So couldn't stop them, and then uh, you know waited too long in the game to get moving on offense. Well, I think any time you're playing against a ranked team, it comes down to one or two possessions, right? And there seemed like every time that we would make a big play or or we would match them, you know, or get close, it just seemed like something didn't go our way when that happened. Yeah, and one one of the things I noticed is is I think we got it 28-21 ish. Then we got it 35-28. Any time we got it close, they would break a long play. And sometimes that's what happens when you got a D1 player no doubt. on your side that's being recruited uh, in the SEC. I, I think Isaac, you know, Smith, he had 
somewhere around five or six touches for 180 yards and several touchdowns. So that's a pretty uh, good average. You, you know, he no he he was again very hard to tackle. Anytime he got the ball, uh, there was one play he kind of hurdled at the line of scrimmage, made a couple guys miss, and if he got loose, we weren't going to catch him. He's fast enough that uh, he can run away from us. So. Um, you know, again, like I said, from a defensive standpoint, need to tackle better, need to need to make sure we um, wrap up. Uh, and again, it was just a tough night trying to contain number two. So when you when you started the game, because yeah, I know we talk a lot about two, but it seemed like early in the game they threw the ball real well, and it well, seemed to surprise me. Almost maybe we were up yeah. on the line. Did we start out a down? Couple, a couple times we had some uh, bust in the secondary, and one of those times specifically was our eyes in the backfield on two. Gotcha. You know, so e- even if he wasn't getting Acted the ball, as a decoy. You, you had to kind of pay attention to where he was, and kind of that lull to sleep a couple times. So uh, our secondary is something that we definitely have to sure up. You know, we can't allow p- long passes over the top. Uh, the quickest way to to give up points is to the secondary to lapse or something. Sure. So. Um, you know, need to, bottom line need to be more sound on defense. Need to have, find a way to get guys on the ground and then keep defense and uh, keep offenses in front of us in the secondary. Um, but again, credit to those guys. That was a really good football team we played. Well, a lot of bright spots. You're competing with a ranked team, right? We were right there at them. I think we had a couple backs that ran the ball real well. Um, has been big defensive plays. Like you said, our offensive line played extremely well. We moved the ball the whole night. I mean, we literally did after those first couple of drives. Yeah, as, as things kind know, of settled in, it seemed right. like we st- our offensive line started leaning on them, and that's where we kind of got some Yeah, and Braden made some really good throws. You know, you know, overall, I think Braden played really well, played a really good game. Offensive line played well, like you said. Um, you know, we spotted a very good team, 21. You know, they got, they got up 21 to nothing on us. Uh, to beat good teams, you can't do that, obviously. Um, like I said, we're very pleased with the, the, the fight and the battle that the guys showed uh, coming back, making it a game, competing, uh, getting back, scratching, clawing to get back into the game. Um, I think ultimately, though, it comes down to, you know, we started off slow and, and we couldn't stop them on, on defense, you know. So, um, you know, we've got to find a way to get that stop. Um, you know, we, again, we, we really like our defensive line, like their linebackers, secondary. Uh, those guys just, again, they went up against a good team. Uh, Itawamba uh, got the better of us. And uh, and team full of seniors, right? And one of the things that I really, as I watched the game, I, I reflected on was uh, we've got a bunch of young players. And this kind of reminds me, and I told Coach this, he may not agree, but it kind of reminds me when we were coaching and we, we went 6-6 six and six or somewhere in there, and then the next year we went 13-1. and one. We had a bunch of young guys that as sophomores won three games, then won six games, then won 13 games. You can kind of see that happening. There was another thing that I was really impressed with. It's real easy for players when things aren't going their way to get down and not compete. What I enjoyed watching this team was down 21-3, something like that. We start moving the ball. We get it to 28-21, I think, and then we get it to 35-28. You saw those linemen hopping around. You saw people excited. You saw no quit, and that's fun to coach. I think, you know, our our conditioning thus far – we, we've gone out this year and have kind of changed the tempo of our offense. We've practiced at a, a, a greater speed uh, at practice uh, and have the ability to speed the game up, you know, uh, and run the offense a little bit quicker. Uh, I think that's paid dividends in our just overall conditioning by practicing a lot faster by those offensive line, the skill guys running back to the line, getting ready to go, running as many plays as we can in a short period of time. Uh, I think our condition showed that we were in better conditioning than Itawamba was. You know, sure. they – they uh, third quarter into the third quarter onto the fourth they started having a lot of guys cramping up um you know just get coming out of the game stopping the game uh we we may have had some guys you know starting to feel that way but they they fought through it they we didn't have a guy on the ground you know i uh, really really proud of the way our guys fought and competed uh, and got out you know we were we were short a couple guys with zach clay being out and so that made some guys do some double duty on offense of those skill positions as well and uh, they really battled, did a good job of that. You know, uh, after East Union week one, you know, we felt good about some things. We, we still feel really good about some things. You know, again, we, we played a, a good football team, played well, uh, just made too many mistakes and, and got off to a slow start. Sure. Mm. Well, talk to us a little bit about stats. I think both of our backs had roughly 100 yards, roughly, didn't they? Yeah, we had uh, – when we did it off the of film, we had um, Cody Atkins with a little over 100 yards. Um and then Keelan Simpson was under it, but he also had a lot of passing yards, receptions. Uh, we were over 200 yards uh, rushing and 200 yards passing, so we were pretty balanced. Braden had a big night. Uh, you know, a lot of that was screen game with offensive lines out in there. Um, running, We had a big uh, uh, running back screen. 
um, to 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 um, Cody Atkinson for about a 50 yard gain, really big play. We had another big play to Caleb Shaw that scored that got us down to the one. Uh, that was around 50 yards. So you know, two big plays right there um, was was a lot of that. But we had over 400 yards of offense, so we definitely moved the ball on a good team. Yeah. Well, I can say one thing too. Really, we really appreciate everybody coming out Friday night. Yeah. We had a great crowd. The atmosphere was awesome. They were getting behind our guys, and you know, I think everybody knew that was coming. They wanted to see us and how how where we could be. I think hopefully, you know, that the guys and the people that watched the game saw those guys fight and saw those guys, you know, get after it. They they take a lot of pride, and on Friday nights, they want you know people to come out and support them, but also that to understand that they're working hard day in and day out, and they want to put a a good show and a good um, you know performance in front of those fans. You know, it's uh, we want Friday nights to be the place to be in New Albany. We, we live in such a great town and community um, that you know Friday nights and have you know the great school district that we have. Friday nights is a special place. You know, all across the state of Mississippi, uh, you know, on Friday nights we, we appreciate the great crowd we have. I want to keep that up. You know, that was something that was one of the better crowds. Well, I think that was a better crowd than we had all last year, probably. Uh, just a really, really good uh, crowd and good environment. Uh, you well, know, and like I said, I know our guys enjoy playing in front of it. You, you know, coming out of COVID, the crowd sizes were, were tough. People were, you know, feeling certain ways about going into crowds. I think people are feeling more comfortable. So I'm proud we're back to a, a large crowd. And so before we get to next week, is there anything else you want to talk about this week? Yeah, like I said, you talked about being having some young players. I think I've said the whole time we've got a really good balance. We've got some key guys, Darrell Bowling. Uh, uh, Cody Atkinson, some of our two of our, our three of our offensive linemen are seniors, you know, so it's a good mix of experienced players, but again, a lot of young guys that we're excited about, you know, guys that are going to be with us for a long time, that are going to be productive, um, you know, just, just can't wait till next week, can't wait sure. to get to Bahia, uh, but then the next week and just see how these guys grow and respond week after week, uh, you know, and, and get better as the season goes. Well, we, we've seen improvement every week, right? They're getting better every game they play and you know, just competing, you know, competing every play, trying to win that battle every single play. Uh, and, you know, I mean, football, they, just like anything, you put a lot of time and effort into it. And nobody wants to perform better than those kids, you know. But um, but that's the same way on both sides of the ball. It doesn't always happen your way. Um, again, but the – there have been times through my career that, that things go bad and kids start fussing and fighting and griping or quitting or laying down, whatever the case may be. And we're really, really pleased with those guys and the way they fought, the way they continued to get up, to hustle out there, to, to try to, to get back in. And they did get back into it. And, uh, you know, just uh, we told them after the game that, you know, the game didn't end the way we wanted to, but we're extremely proud of their performance, extremely proud of their effort and excited about what that showed for the future. Uh, yeah, and that's impressive to me. You know, I, you, you've coached a lot of places. Mr. Henry, you have too. New Albany's the, the only place I've ever coached, but I've seen exactly what you described. And, you know, there's coaches who say you shouldn't have to coach effort. Sometimes you end up coaching effort. But it is fun when you have a group that gets after it regardless of the score and just works hard. You know, on Friday night, the coach's role, you've tried to prepare and we've tried to do everything you can to get them in that position to be successful. But you're, you're an encourager on Friday night. You're trying to get on them, get them to do right, whatever the case may be. Um, you, you know, but most of the time on Friday nights, it, it's make corrections and lift them up and get them going. So, gotcha. again, they, they played they played really well and had a great effort. Um, you know, there, there's only a few things we can say as far as we didn't like the way it ended. Um, but you know, but we're really glad with the way we played. Well, I, t- I tell you, one thing happened the other night, and I wish he'd, he'd got in. But wasn't it Matt Harris, one of our linemen, picked up a fumble and was advancing the ball? <laughs> he yeah. Hey, good, didn't he? hey, we were man. I was cheering for him, trying to get in that end zone. I'd love for a lineman to score. You know, you know, if you if you watched the game, you saw us kind of going away from number two a lot of the times on offense, and it was funny because after that, I think number two ended up tackling him and. And, and I think he remembered who number two was. That's <laughs> and, uh, I like it. He definitely had some things to say as far as remembering uh, Isaac Smith hitting him and stuff. And so, uh, you know, Ma- Matthew, that's any time in an offensive lineman's uh, career that you get a chance to run get on the ball, ball and run the oh, football. Yeah. Uh, it, it's definitely something that he's going to remember. And, uh, you know, the good thing is he got he got some yards out of it. I think he had five yards. You know, the big thing we talk about. Stat sheet. He definitely is hey. in the stat sheets. And the reality of that is regardless of how long a running back runs it, if he fumbles it, the other guy gets it's those yards and so have you ever seen an nfl where they'll do practices and they'll let the linemen be their oh, skill yeah. guys i bet that's a lot of fun and they yeah. get that opportunity well there. and i'm waiting for chris russell's hype video right because i hope i hope that cut 
<laughs> I hope our, our big man running the football makes a cut for the hype makes video this week. That's right. You know? That's right. Well, good deal. Well, Coach, thanks so much. So stay with us, and when we come back from the break, we're going to talk a little bit about this week's opponent, so don't leave us. Call State Farm agent Wally Morgan at 662-539-7062 today. Well, welcome back to Inside New Albany High School Football. So this now we're going to talk about this coming week's opponent. Before we do, though, we had a debut on radio and TV last week. Mr. Henry, how was that? What, well, I'll tell you what. Let's, let's just say that was interesting for me. <laughs> and I promise you, David Goode, I cannot fill your shoes. I promise you I can't. But, um, hey, enjoyed being with Kurt and um, Mr. Conley. And we had a big time. And I tell you what, they do an amazing job on the radio and all. And, and when I went back and actually watched the the, the game yeah, online, yeah, you know, on and, and I tell you what, I I felt like I was was doing things not the right way, you know. But um, it's definitely had, harder than it looks. It, it is definitely harder than it looks. But I promise you, Dave Good, you have no worries <laughs> no about me filling your shoes in the future. <laughs> well, what I would tell you is, everybody who's listening or watching from home, for all three of the guys that do that, it's a lot harder than it looks. So hundred percent, hundred percent, and 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 they've done it for for quite Years. some oh time gosh, now. Time. And I oh. tell you, they they do an amazing job with that. But it's definitely harder than you think it is for sure. <laughs> yeah, we, the the broadcast in general, Chris Russell, the kids in journalism, uh, the WNAU crew, those guys that you mentioned. I mean, it's a it's a it's a production. It really is, and they do a tremendous job with that. You know, that's not something that. Uh, you have that quality uh, of a, a game and a broadcast everywhere. Uh, we're really fortunate to have those those kids and those men that do that weekly. Yeah, so I was out of town. I can't remember where I was, but I was out of town and got to watch it on live stream. And, you know, even some of the sideline shots, we'd score a touchdown and they would throw the camera in on the track looking at the fans. I thought that was really cool. So Chris and the, and the, and the kids, also the, the radio guys are all doing a really good job. And I know people all over town – I mean, Tallahatchie Gourmet tweeted a picture. They're showing it while people are, yeah. are eating. And so I know the whole town appreciates it. No doubt. And, and and I keep saying this over and over and over, but, you know, we're like a family, right? New Albany is like a family. Um, we want our kids to be successful. We want our community to be, to be successful. You know, football just brings all that together. Absolutely. So let's talk about this week. Where do we play? Who do we play? And tell us about it. Uh, week three, we're at Bahalia. Uh, you know, Jeff Payne is a guy that's retired, out-of-state coach, came back, came into Mississippi. Uh, this is his first year at Bahalia. I got the job, I think, middle of the summer sometime. In, uh, you know, so he's relatively short span there, uh, but brings a lot of experience, uh, you know, and knowledge to Bahalia his program you know by gets off the bus they're going to be impressive you know they are every year they've got some guys uh, that are exceptional athletes that are going to be big up front um you know in the past they haven't put some of that together they whether it be turnovers or just missed assignments and uh you know they they haven't put it together you know we're, we're certainly hoping that friday night they don't put it together and we're fine uh you know but uh, it, when we when we get there you know we're gonna have to make sure we play well you know anytime we play we want to make sure we're at, playing at a high level um you know but uh, certainly a team like that that's that you're coming in that you're that you should be able to take care of you, you know you don't want to let them get confidence you don't want to get find out wind up in a dog fight so we want to come out swinging want to be uh dominant even though like i said they're going to have some physical guys that are going to be good um but we, we've got some of those too though so we want to make sure we play the way we're capable um and get after them from the first uh, of the whistle well you know when we go on the road it's always a dog fight right no matter who you play and where you go Playing somebody beating somebody on their home field is always harder than in your place, right? Yeah, you know, by like I said, they've they've gotten beat by Ripley and then got beat by Lewisburg. Um, you know, but again, they're a wing T team, you know, offensively. Uh so it's gonna be a different look for us for our defense. They're gonna do some unbalanced sets. Um, you know, some things that we've got to make sure we get lined up and right. Anytime you add guys to line of scrimmage, you're, you're creating gaps for a defense. And so, you know, our defense is, and every defense is built around being gap sound. Um, you know, so we're going to have to make sure to, do we do our linebackers get us in the right, the right, um, alignment and then make sure we play sound defensively. Uh, you know, the other thing we want to do, we talked a lot about not tackling well this past week. We want to make sure we tackle better this week. Um, you know, so the, 
offensively their defense by his defense they're they're very similar they're going to play a three four a lot of teams are going that to kind of combat the spread offense um, so we're going to be very familiar uh, with just the alignment uh, on their defensive side of the ball uh, you know so I think that'll so provide some comfort for our O-line you know anytime you get kind of used to that uh, it makes it for a little bit easier um, but we we got to do just like we do every week win the line of scrimmage you know get after those guys up front uh, and throw and catch offensively so it's gonna be it's gonna be a good game you know we're excited about getting to go down there um, and getting back on the field are you getting any players back that have been injured and do you have any that are possibly injured that won't get to play yeah this past week Zach Clay he has started the first game at slot receiver he does a lot of things on special teams he, he's a backup holder backup snapper uh, you know as a, as a big part of the team uh, he was out last week's got a, got a leg injury uh, you know so we're expecting him to be back he's practiced this week uh, he was our, our biggest uh, you know contributor uh, as far as starters go um, that, that was out we do have you know Drew Hobson is still out you know he hasn't been here all season uh, he's been getting good reports he's still got some time that he's going to be out but we're optimistic that he is going to get to kind of get back with us before the end of the season so that's going to be a you know a, a returning starting inside linebacker that we'd like to get back uh, Friday night, Ethan Cathy's are starting left tackle. He got banged up. He's got a knee injury. Um, hoping that it's not too serious. You know, he, he went to the doctor uh, today and had it examined. You know, but they're they're taking care of him. His parents uh, taking care of him. Drew, uh, you know, want to basically make sure we can get him out there as quick as we can. But uh, Ethan's a big part of our of our team and our offense, especially. Uh, so we we'll probably will be without Ethan uh, tomorrow, tomorrow night, and uh, and then we'll, we'll kind of see that goes. But with that, you know, we get to get a, a another guy an opportunity to get in we'll probably we'll shuffle the deck a little bit you know the plan right now is for ethan conley our center to shift out to left tackle he's going to play there some we've got a guy that's been getting reps there uh is uh, uh horn uh you know he, he's been a good guy for us there so he'll you'll see him in the game uh when ethan bumps out we're going to shift uh, matthew harris to center uh, which will open up a guard spot, and then Jackson Howard, another ninth grader, is going to come in and probably start at that right guard. You know, so um, anytime you get an opportunity to start a ninth grader uh, that you feel good about, you know, you, you like getting that those reps and that experience there. So uh, look for look for Jackson Howard uh, and then Brady Horn to get some reps. And those are two. That's a ninth grader and a sophomore. And go ahead. The game still starts at seven thirty, right? Game still at seven thirty. You know, to go along Is that with those, August and September through August and September, uh, every game starts at seven thirty. When we get into October, it's going to push back to seven o'clock, which is the normal start time. You know, but we talked about those two young guys. Of course, we've got a lot of other young guys. Brady's uh, Brady. Uh, Braden Shettles is still going to be that quarterback. He did a really good job last week for us. Had a lot of yards throwing. Um, you know, we played a tough uh, game. Uh, he'll be back again. That's another ninth grader. I think Braden. One just a quick comment. I, I I was impressed. It's real hard when you're rolling out on the run to make good throws, and I've seen him make a few to the sideline that most quarterbacks would throw away or they'd take off running. He's made some hard throws right there. So I, he looks good moving the pocket, evading. And extending plays. Yeah, you know, we, we try to get him. He, he's he's fast. He, he's very mobile. Uh, he does a good job on the run, like you're saying. So we do some different things to get him running. We also, when ta- when things break down, when the play's not going just right, he's got the ability to scramble, to extend plays. Uh, we, we've done it. Dennis Robbins has come in and, and done a good job with some of those guys. And, and we've, we've done a scramble drill more often this year than we have in the past because Braden extends plays, gives those receivers an opportunity to stay moving, getting open. Uh, and that, that, and they've that, done a good touchdown. job of that. You, know, you can tell the practice. Jarrell Boland's touchdown, you know, that he got was a broke down play. Uh, Jarrell kept moving. Braden found him, uh, led to a touchdown. So Braden's ability to extend plays and any quarterback's ability to extend plays is a huge attribute, uh, to an offense. So, but again, Braden's a ninth grader. You know, um, DJ Robinson was a two way starter Friday. That's a sophomore. Uh, a lot of young guys. Jeb Bowen plays a lot on both sides. Another sophomore. Uh, Jaden Hicks is a sophomore on, that starts at defensive end. Emmanuel Tucker is a ninth grader that starts at defensive end. Uh, we started a ninth grader inside linebacker uh, with Parker uh, Skinner. You know, a lot of young guys getting to play. And again, it goes back to that good mix of, of experience and, and young guys. Um, but again, a week in and week out, we're excited about another opportunity to go see those guys get better and compete. Well, tell us a little bit about Bahia. What are some numbers that we need to pay attention to, and and looking at them, and what kind of what are we going to see from them? Yeah, we saw we heard what the offense and defense look like, but who are some of the players we need to watch out for? 
you know, they're going to have several different guys that got to watch. You know, anytime you have a triple, uh, a wing a T offense. The two wings in the back are a big deal. They, right. Those guys are where it starts and stops. But both wings are really good players. They, they're they full of athletes. Um, you know, they, they, they've thrown the ball, I think, a total of eight times uh, and haven't had a completion yet. So, they're you know, they, they've got to, we've got to they're stop the run. run the ball. Heavy so, dose, right. Heavy dose yeah, of running. You know, no full And they're up. always big and strong when they, when they, I mean, for years coaching against them, they're always big strong and fast yeah fullback's a big kid you know he's going to be a, a physical runner and then those two wings that got great speed so i mean they're, they're certainly guys that we've got to contain uh the issue for them has, has been like i said just putting it together blocking up front those assignments being sound uh, they, they've typically had had trouble sustaining drives so um you know those are the things we want to up front we want to continue to cause problems on the on the line uh, and like I said, just not let those guys get going. Yep. And new coach, right? They've got a new coach up there. So, yeah, was, really. Yep. Came in it's July. That's right. That's right. So, well, thanks so much for being with us. We hope you enjoyed episode three. Uh, like we said, our our sponsors were here at State Farm Insurance, Mr. Wally Morgan. And also, uh, the show is sponsored by Gumtree Mortgage, Brady Brock, and Jody Walls. So, give them a call. We want to thank you so much for watching, and we hope you see you next week. Go, dogs. Wally Morgan State Farm is proud to host Coach Cody Stubblefield's New Albany Bulldog pregame show. At Wally Morgan State Farm, family is important to us. We think of ourselves as a family and our community as a family. And nothing is more important than nurturing the youth in our community. We are super proud of Coach Stubblefield and all the work he's done for Bulldog football. And we are super excited to support him and the entire team and see what they do this season. Go Dogs!